Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome into the pod at the palace. Curtis Wilkerson, Scotty Bordelon from Natty State Sports with you, not from the studios in downtown Fayetteville. That's because we're uh, we're in the bunker. We're in the trenches right now. We're at our home offices because had a little bit of news tonight. John Calipari has named Kenny Payne, former Louisville coach, former New York Knicks assistant, former John Calipari assistant at Kentucky is his new associate head coach. We had heard rumblings that this might be a thing. And uh, turns out that it's real and it's been officially named uh, as a hire in addition to the staff for Arkansas. So things are starting to come together a little bit with this coaching staff, which you you love to see it. So, um, you know, uh, it's 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 coaching staff news. It's not it's not a commitment. It's not a recruit, whatever. But, hey, we're uh, we're here. Hey, we're here for any kind of news, right? Absolutely. I mean, we've been waiting on literally anything <laughs> for the last little while since Big Z popped. Um, I'm at home right now with all the kids. Mal is out of the house. And I nearly handed my phone to the two-year-old to watch YouTube Kids. And then 15 seconds later, the news popped. I just Something in my mind was like, don't hand this kid the phone just yet. Um, I would have had I, him on here just fine. It's... <laughs> I, I handed him the phone about 30 seconds ago and said, buddy, go nuts. So here we are. Yeah. We got, yeah. we got, the st- we got the story online and you know, we're, we're cooking now. Yeah. Good stuff uh, from, from Cal to get, to get Kenny Payne hired here. And so you're starting to see the coaching staff come together. He's got his associate head coach uh, in Kenny Payne. We know that Chin Coleman is, is for sure going to be on staff because I mean, I, I think that's a fair assumption to make. It's been reported by Nat, Matt Norlander. And we also saw, Right. Uh, Shane Coleman with John Calipari out at the overtime elite thing on Tuesday. So you also feel pretty good, good about that one. Yeah. Also a good sign. He's out there recruiting with him. Um, and then Ronnie Brewer Jr. We know that he's going to be on staff in some capacity. So uh, the pieces are starting to come together. We'll see what happens with Orlando Antigua. Thought that that was going to be maybe a for sure thing. And then maybe, maybe it's not. It uh, doesn't sound like he's going to stay at Kentucky. I know Illinois has been a possibility there. Uh, so, so we'll see kind of what happens. A lot of people have been talking about ISO Joe, maybe the, the Joe Johnson element there. Yeah, uh, there's the, some legs to that as far uh, as you know. I, I think there's some legs to it for sure. Uh, if it comes to fruition or not, I, I don't know yet. You know, it's, it's uh, nothing official. And with something like that, I mean, that would be, that would be big time. So I don't want to, I don't want to speak it to existence and, and then it not happen. I just want to say, just to be clear, it's Joe Johnson and not Marcus Monk, right? Yes. That is that is that is correct. Okay. Um, right. Even though apparently they, there are some out there who think that those guys might be doppelgangers. I don't know. Uh, but that, you know, it's a, it's a little interesting. Uh, that's a t- that's a tough place to be in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just for the record, your your wife wants to know where the kids are. Are they are they safe and secure? They are safe and secure. They have been fed. They are playing basketball. Very good. Very good. Um, so with this Kenny Payne hire, let's, let's just, let's talk about Kenny Payne for a minute, because I want to, I want to go ahead and get this out of the way now, because I already know that there'll be some Arkansas fans who are probably a little bit unsure about this one, because a lot of their memories of Kenny Payne are probably, uh, one, if you really paid attention, he beat you in Bud Walton arena when Cal got, got kicked out of that game in year one of the Muslim right, yeah. era. Uh, but, but then two, he really struggled in his head coaching spot at Louisville and, Listen, I don't, I think it would be, you can't just ignore it because it happened. It was, it was a rough two years for him. Uh, wasn't built for it. It just, it just didn't work out. And there's, there's no sugarcoating that. But what I will say is do not let that cloud your mind in terms of what he can bring to the table as an assistant coach. It's just different, man. And, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, I was a college coach at a, at a smaller level, obviously. Uh, but for for almost a decade and some people were just great assistant coaches and yeah. it's it hits different when you're in that head seat that's exactly what happened to me i i thought i was growing i thought i was i thought i personally i thought i did a really good job as an assistant coach felt like i was a good recruiter i'm felt sure like you were man don't sell yourself no short. but no in all honesty like i, I feel like i brought a lot to the table and yeah. i always kind of had that itch like man when am i going to get my shot well then i did and there were a lot of circumstances at play there it was a it was a mid season, the head coach just dipped and I had to take over the the head seat in the middle of the year. Um, and I realized real quickly, it was just different, man. The, the responsibility is different. The pressure is different. Uh, it's a completely different world when you're the guy instead of uh, the guy behind the scenes. So 
Um, I wouldn't read too much into that Louisville stuff. What I would say is, hey, he uh, he was on that when when Calipari was at his best during his era at Kentucky. A lot of it was when Kenny Payne was with him. He was part of that national championship staff. Was a really really good recruiter, and I think that's going to pay dividends here. And then apparently he's like the big man whisperer, and uh, you know, sign me up for that. We know we know how I feel about big post players. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if it was up to Curtis, our, uh, I mean, Arkansas's whole roster would be just portal big men, right? Or maybe maybe you save space for Jaden Quintins and uh, Santo Cyril, but yeah, the, rest of the guys would be it'd be Jonas Adu and you know. Uh, Big Cliff and Umar Balo and and those type guys. Yeah, just, we we put a do uh, at the three. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Why not? <laughs> That'd be the wildest lineup I've ever seen in my life. Um, but yeah, I think there's there's like a definite def- uh, definitive trust with with Cal and, and and Kenny Payne and you know you mentioned that uh, you know he was on the bench for that 2010 uh, or he he was on the bench in in 2010 and was on the you know, he was one of Cal's most trusted assistants during that 2012 championship run. I mean, the guy doesn't get to that position for no reason. Exactly. And, you know, he was, I think he was at, at Oregon um, previously. Um, you know, he. It, I mentioned this on a, on a podcast recently, like and you, you kind of alluded to it a minute ago. Um, it's just a different beast when you're the, you're the guy in the main chair. Like you can go from as an assistant coach being focused on certain aspects of the program to your daily responsibility is the entire program. Like that is a, that is a lot to shoulder. Um, And when you don't have ACC level talent at Louisville, um, you're going to have a bad record. And that's what Kenny Payne had at Louisville. Um, I feel like it was more of a, uh, a, a lack of accumulation of talent thing as opposed to his, you know, his, his coaching abilities, but at the same time, I think he's um, much better suited to be an assistant coach as, as opposed to a head coach. Yeah, no doubt about it. I also think about something that Gus Arginal said to us when we interviewed him before his, his final four game. Uh, he's obviously the the head coach at division two school, but Cal state uh, San Bernardino now. And we kind of posed the question to him, like what, what did you take away from your time at Arkansas? That's kind of helped you for this job now. And he was a head coach for a stint before he was at Nevada, before he was at Arkansas. And he just, he, he just learned a lot. He felt like he grew, felt like he was a different person. And I I think there's something to be said for that. And I think the experience that Kenny Payne had as a head coach, whether it didn't go well for him or not, uh, he probably learned a lot from that and he might be a better assistant coach now because of it. So, um, I, I think it's good. And from a, from a recruiting standpoint, I I get the sense that this could help Arkansas a lot. Now I'm, I'm I'm connecting dots here, but you think back to the recruitment of DJ Wagner out of high school. Obviously, he just played his freshman year at Kentucky uh, under Calipari. Has entered the transfer portal since Cal took the job at Arkansas. Uh, you would like to think maybe he would follow Cal to Fayetteville. Uh, Arkansas recruited him too. There were some connections there with Keith Smart and and obviously Muss and everything with those NBA days. Uh, but Louisville was a big player in that game also. And that's because of some of the connections that Kenny Payne had to that family. Uh, same with Coach Cal. So you've almost added to the connections and the relationships that you have there. So, uh, I mean, the NIL is going to be there. The connections with the staff are going to be there. It just seems like that that it feels like a good fit for DJ Wagner at Arkansas. We'll see what happens. He said he's going to hear some things out. I don't know if he's going to take some visits or, you know, what kind of crazy offers are going to be out there. We'll talk about one in particular uh, with an Arkansas target here in a minute. Uh, But you got to feel like Arkansas is probably in a pretty good spot there now. Yeah, I would think so. And, you know, I've been watching DJ Wagner's tape quite a bit. And I'm like, I think I'm to the point where if they take him, I'm fine with it. If DJ wants to go another route, I think I'm okay with it. Um, he's definitely a guy that I think you'd like to have on your roster, though. Um, what kind of role he's in, I don't know. I mean, he was in a starting role at, at Kentucky last year. Um, I just think there's some, you know, I think some, you know, the the jump shot is probably something that you want to continue to work on and um, trying to get to the rim 
in other ways other than going to your left hand is probably another good thing to to to, to work on you know but um i think that relationship is tight for sure and um i, I just think he's he's probably he just maybe had a little bit more work to do on that game than anticipated coming out of high school which is fine hey it's okay if you're not a one and done guy like like there's there's you know really good players that have to spend multiple years in college i don't think there's any any shame in that whatsoever um i wouldn't mind covering dj wagner i think that'd be i think that'd be pretty cool man like just see his game develop in arkansas i think that would be be pretty interesting yeah sign me up for that i mean honestly at this point like sign me up for i don't know anyone because they they have one scholarship player at the moment. Uh, and I know that like yeah. earlier today I was on the pod saying, Hey, like, you know, be patient. These things take time, but the more and more guys is true. Like the more and more guys you see come off the board, uh, the more and more days go by. You're just like, you know, I know that they're going to build the roster, but uh, you know, maybe the sooner the better tease us a little bit, uh, feed the beast a little bit. As some people have, have said to us and, uh, in yeah. Twitter comments and on YouTube and in, in, in the discord, I get it, man. And so, uh, I think this puts them in a good position with DJ Wagner. Um, I agree with, with the comment that I saw here. I mean, Knox, I, Kevin or Carter Knox, I think was a, was probably a lock anyway, or, or near a lock. Um, obviously McDonald's all American in that 2024 class decommitted from Kentucky and, and he's wide open now. Uh, that probably only helps solidify things with Kenny Payne now. Uh, and, and then you wonder about, you know, a guy like Billy Richmond too, who was another just highly coveted wing prospect in, in that class of cows at Kentucky, who's, uh, opened things back up. And, you know, he's a guy who, uh, has a, has a relationship there with EJ Wagner. And so if, if that domino falls, maybe it leads to, to more. So you need to build a roster. You got to get some guys in there. And I think that this one certainly helps. And then, uh, he has just a, a big reputation as a guy who does a good job of developing bigs. And, you know, Arkansas's in the mix in trying to to lock down visits with some some big fish in the front court. I mean, we've talked about Jonas Adu. Uh, I know Arkansas's, you know, probably one of the top top three or four programs right now for his services. He's visiting Baylor this weekend. We know that they're handing out bags, so he's got to get out of that visit. Uh, I don't like maybe, that. I don't either. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Uh, and then the same thing with with Big Brandon Garrison out of Oklahoma State, who we talked about quite a bit on the pod earlier this morning. Uh, you know, same kind of deal. Arkansas is trying to to work its way into the mix there. Uh, he's visited Oklahoma, eh, whatever, but he is going to Texas this weekend. You got to get him on the other side of that visit, and, and then maybe you can get him on the campus next week. So, um, Kenny Payne, big man whisper, maybe that maybe that helps a little bit in in terms of solidifying some of those things as well. Yeah, for sure. And I didn't want to sell DJ Wagner. Short either. I mean, I think there's some definitely some things that can improve in his game, but like that assist rate is really nice. And you know, if Arkansas was to get him, they would have a legitimate pick and roll threat, you know, and you wouldn't have yeah. to rely on on Lawson Blake, you know, running exactly. running running point on that thing anymore. Um, but yeah, like hearing that Baylor is kind of the front runner for Jeremy Roach tells me that you know that they're not really playing around, and then you know Jonas Adu. Um, being a potential option there, like you just you kind of feel like they're kind of going all in at this point on trying to get some veteran pieces in the front court and the back court. Um, so that kind of puts your antennas up. I think Kenny Payne helps with helps with something like this. Like he was a, I mean, he was a big guy in college too, right? Like put up pretty nice numbers. Right. Louisville won a national title, so he 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 knows what the deal is. Um, yeah, I think just getting another piece or two or you know, several Ten. Pieces, <laughs> pieces, <laughs> several pieces around big Z. I think that's a, that's a, an obvious must, but um, man, I, I just can't, I, I know we've talked about it the last couple of pods. I'm super sold on, on Jonas. I do. I don't think you can understate the the value of a guy who, you know, knows his way around the league, like, like he does. And, and brings the toughness of rebounding and the fact that he can play for Rick Barnes tells me that he's a, he's a pretty solid kid. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, maybe, you know, if all these, uh, all these rumors and rumblings are true, then you can just have Jerry Jones hop in the, uh, the private jet, pick a do up at Waco and then just bring him to Fayetteville. Like don't, don't even give him the opportunity to, to commit or sign anything. Just pick him up on, on the PJ, bring him to Fayetteville and, uh, and double the bag. Cause that, that's what he's doing, right? That that's the rumor. So 
Right. Yeah. Two X everything. Yeah, exactly. And man, it's crazy because, you know, with Jeremy Roach and we can go ahead and get into that and it'll, it'll knock off one of the, or well, a handful of the comments that we have here in the chat and, and please continue to roll those in uh, and, and we'll get to them here shortly. Um, but you know, when, when Jeremy Roach, the Duke guard hits the, uh, hits the portal the other night, you immediately start hearing, Hey, Arkansas, Kentucky, St. John's big players for Jeremy Roach. And there are connections there with Cal. I mean, Kentucky recruited him heavily. They had, you know, crystal ball predictions or, or whatever you want to call them, uh, to land him at one point. And then he ultimately winds up at Duke, but you know that there was a, at least a, a decent relationship there with Cal. Um, so you thought maybe that's somebody that Arkansas could really get in on. Then all of a sudden you hear that Baylor is the front runner and, and you're starting to hear, you know, 1.5 million in NIL being thrown out there. Listen, if, <laughs> if, uh, it, it doesn't matter to me how much NIL money Arkansas has chicken man, Tyson money, Jerry Jones, whatever. Jeremy Roach is a really nice player and he'd be a yeah. hell of a guard for Arkansas. He ain't worth 1.5 mil. He's Agreed. just not. I yeah. mean, I mean the, the, the alleged asking price for a guy like Umar Balo, right? Who was a double double machine in the Pac 12 yep. Indiana commit. Like his asking price was allegedly like 1.2. What is he doing? Yes. But, if, but <laughs> like, of course, he's going to go to Baylor if they're willing to you know, to fork that kind of, that kind of cash over. That's pretty wild, man. Right. And, and then I, I do wonder, um, and it, I guess somebody just put in here in the chat, uh, Ben Zimmerman says a dude just got a crystal ball to Baylor. They must really be throwing around money. Yeah. I mean, cause I think you could look at it one of two ways. Like if they're offering Roach 1.5 mil, well, how much freaking money they have left over for anybody else? Apparently enough. <laughs> yeah, so, no um, you know, and Arkansas is a, a heavy player in the game. They're not the only one. So, um, there you go. And, and so if that winds up being the case and, and a do commits on that visit, then I think you got a little bit more pressure on you to really try to go all in and, and get a guy like Garrison on campus and, and see if you can land him. And it's gonna, it's going to be tough. We talked about it. Like that first visit, getting that first visit, it just feels like it means more and more nowadays because guys are going, they're liking what they hear. They're getting a, you know, getting the bag that they like and they're popping right away. Right. Uh, especially these transfers. So we'll see. And, and then if you, you know, if you, if you miss on a do and, you know, let's say Garrison commits to Texas over the weekend, then you really start, you know, you have to go down the list a little bit. Um, and then you really, really need to get at least one of these, one of these freshmen uh, because you got Big Z. It's a good foundation piece. You're obviously going to need more for your front court, whether that's these freshmen or, uh, you know, even a guy like Dylan Mitchell at, at the four, and you, I don't know, maybe you want to play some small ball or whatever. Uh, but there's a lot of options. There's, there's 1700 dudes in the portal and there's going to be right. more just when you're operating with one scholarship guy, you, you'd like to have a little bit more in the cupboard as, as dudes start coming off the board. Yeah, for sure. And you might try to just push yourself to the front of the line for a guy like great Osabor, right? Like, a, yeah, oh, absolutely. A 250 pound forward who can, create space for himself, rebound block shots, you know, pass the ball, come up with blocks and steals and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, yeah, he's a guy that I think you'd, you'd want to, you know, try to try to nab if some other things fall through, even if some other things don't fall through, I think it's a guy that you, you might want to try to pursue. Yeah, no doubt about it. I do want to throw this out there uh, just real quick and then we'll get to the comments and get out of here. We got, we got dinner to eat and things to do, but what do you think about, another Tennessee Ford who's hit the portal. And we just really haven't heard that much about Toby Awaka. I mean, yeah. speaking of six, eight, 250 pound dudes, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I remember I was, uh, I was actually looking earlier today. Um, I remember the day that we did the podcast where we added Toby Awaka to the, the, the portal board, February 16th. Um, <laughs> got this in my notes and it was actually, it's, it's gone to my laptop. Toby Awaka is from New York. Uh, not a big numbers guy, but Rick Barnes front court toughness is a big box checked six, eight two fifty. Uh, ideal height and length. If you want some girth too. Um, I mean, I think he ended up being a guy that, that Rick Barnes kind of trusted in the NCAA tournament when J Jonas Adu got in foul trouble early against, um, against Zach Eady. I think Awaka was a guy that they threw in there to, you know, try to 
minimize some of the the damage that he was doing, which is really he hung really, in there. Really, it's really freaking hard to do against yeah. Zach Eady, but he's no Chandler um, Lawson, but he uh, he gave it his best shot. So no, definitely, um, he was a guy that didn't get a whole lot of run at Tennessee, but maybe he's looking for you know maybe a, a little bit of a an, an increased role at you know at his next stop, and that's a that's a guy that I I think I scanned over. Um, this morning, just like I scanned over the first time, I scanned over Mason Gillis the first time. Uh, right. I saw him the second time, but yeah, I think Toby Awak is a he's super interesting dude. He's he's like the cinder block meatball type of build exactly. that you know that we were talking about a couple months ago. It'd be ideal. Yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, and by the way, a, a guy that that I brought up in the pod earlier today out of Stanford, Brandon Angel. Did you see that he's uh he's visiting Duke this weekend? Is that right? Okay. Yeah. So hadn't heard anything about him. I'm like, Hey man, maybe that's just a dude flying under the radar. No, 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 no. Just a, another blue bloods on him. So yeah. Shire's you know. all over him already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, it makes sense. If you, if you look at his game, um, he'd probably be a pretty good fit there. Maybe a, like a Kyle Filipowski type replacement, even though he's a little bit smaller than, than flip was. Um, okay. Let's get to the comments real quick and get out of here. Really appreciate everybody who's kind of tuned in with us. Like we said, when, when things happen, we're going to try to go live as much as we can. If it's a commitment, we want a hundred thousand percent. We'll do that. Um, and, and they're coming eventually It'd be cool if we had more, I get it. Uh, but it's going to happen. And then obviously, um, I, I just, I think this is a big deal for Arkansas is Kenny Payne hire, um, associate head coach, uh, the first piece officially on John Calipari staff. And it, it seems like, you know, people are, people are excited about it here to talk about the hire. We got some let's goes, Same. um, love the hire. I, I, I like all those things. So, uh, we've already, we've already checked on the, uh, on the kids. So that's a good thing from, from Mal there. The kids are safe and sound. Yeah. I heard them in the background for a second. So did you, know. you really? Yeah. Just for a second. Sounds like they're having fun. You know? Yeah, uh, uh, that is not the case. <laughs> but it's okay. Onward. I love it. Yes, onward. Uh, Jim Matchett says, uh, which player does pain, the pain hire help win over the most? Uh, just right off the top without really, I don't know, like making any calls or anything tonight. I, I think DJ Wagner, that, that just makes the most sense to me, right. uh, given where Louisville was with his recruitment and, and some of the history there. Um, let's see. Paul Rowland says, I don't think ISO Joe was at the press conference for no reason. Just my opinion. And Kenny Payne is big. I, I think I tend to agree with all those things. Yeah. Like when I saw Joe Johnson there or found out that he was there, I was trying to like, why, you know what I mean? Cause yeah, there's a lot, lots right. of former Arkansas players that weren't there. Uh, but Joe Johnson being there, I didn't hate it anyway. Um, but yeah, I was trying to, I guess trying to piece that one together. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I thought that was, uh, thought that was interesting. J.R. Shelton says, and here we go. I hope that's true. Maybe it's, uh, you know, just another domino knocked over and things start to snowball here. Uh, I like this from Hunter McLaren. He says national media is given pain props is one of the best assistant coaches in, in college ball. Woo pig suey. I don't know if that's true or not, but I, I know that he was, was very highly regarded. You don't get the job at Louisville without a bunch of head coaching experience, unless you were regarded as one of the better head coaches in the, in the country or uh, assistant coaches in the country, in my opinion, um, yeah. I know, you know, he's got the, a lot of history with Louisville, but uh, had he had not done some of the things he done at, at, at Kentucky, you know, in the NBA, all those things, that's, uh, that's how you get that kind of job. And we learned this with Mus, like there's never too much NBA experience that you can have on your staff. And, and so this just kind of adds to it. So who knows, like if it works out, you know, maybe the way people are hoping, then you've got a, uh, you know, a guy like Kenny Payne that has that. We know that that Cal's got the track record, uh, Ronnie Brewer Jr. And then you, man, I don't know if you get a guy like Joe Johnson, then you just got a staff full of NBA dudes. And uh, you know, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Got a lot of big three experience too. You know, that's right. Yeah, oh, don't, big... don't, don't don't discount that, man. No, uh, listen, Joe Johnson could go play in the big three right now with uh, with me and you as his teammates and probably win that thing. So he looked good, <laughs> man. He looked like he still had he it. Really did. Yeah, it looked great. And he had that suit on. So yeah. Yeah. So he, he was looking good. For sure. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Kevin Austin says, uh, when do we get some announcements on players? I don't know. You'll know Soon. when we know they'll, they'll have a team. So I, I guarantee you that it's coming. But uh, like we said earlier in the day, like, I mean, I mean, things are happening. Uh, it takes a little bit of time when you request uh, for a release from your letter of intent, like some of these freshmen have. So, 
uh, once that happens, those things start to speed up. That's coming. Uh, once you get a staff put in place, that helps because guys want to know who their head coach is. They also want to know who the assistants are because that's who they talk to the most on a day to day basis. That helps. Very You're nice. seeing their name. Their names are popping up with more and more transfers. Like it, it, it's coming. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. Frustrating. I get it. L says, Uncle Kurt looking good with that five o'clock shadow. Listen, no doubt. This is not a five o'clock. This is a five day shadow uh, for me, but I'll, I'll embrace it until, <laughs> until my wife makes me get rid of it or uh, starts looking silly. I, I would love to grow in uh, the full beard, but once it starts getting to the point where it's really growing in, it starts turning all red and gingery. I just, I can't have that man. So it's just, it's just not a, not a, not going to be a thing. Yeah. We got Eddie Congress in here says uh, KP is a very good big man coach. People say he's a good recruiter, but that's BS. All his connections dried up when worldwide West got out of the high school recruiting game. Um, but Hey, maybe, maybe worldwide West gets back into it. You know, don't, don't sell anything short here. Who knows? I think he is a good big man's coach. Um, we'll see about the recruiting side of things. Again, it's it's different from being a from being a head coach to an assistant man. It's just a different world. No doubt about it. It uh, would be like me. It would like it would be like me going from um, s- very second chair on this podcast to hosting the podcast. I would do a significantly less good job as the host of this than I do. I don't even know if I'm doing a good job at the, in this seat, but I would do a significantly less good in in the in the head chair. This is crazy talk, and a good time for a timely comment here from Bohannon. He's a C dub. Scotty's giving you a run for goat status. I I I think oh, that you already you already had that, but uh, you know, if we want to go dual goat or something, that's fine. <laughs> but you you sell yourself short. You know, you do no, you do a great okay. job here. That's major cap. We also got a comment from uh, from Logan Coker here. It says your gaming headset looks really good, Scotty. So I got this headset a couple of years ago at the Hall of Fame Classic in Kansas City. I was needed really? to do a, a podcast with uh, with Bob um, while we were in Kansas City. Yeah, so I got it at a at a Best Buy there. Love that. Absolutely love that. Paul Rowan, he's talking about Kenny Payne here. He says he develops post players. When is the last time we've seen that at Arkansas? Uh, I don't know, man. Um, development and post players. I mean, well, Daniel Gafford got better freshman to sophomore year. He did. Is that too long for too long ago for people? Also, if y'all can hear my kids screaming, I am so sorry. Can't. I'm really, I'm really sorry. That's no. Good. It's just a little. It's just a, a very slight background. Okay, it's no big deal. I did just hear a dog bark. So one of the kids oh. probably pulled a tail or something. But other than that, <laughs> probably <it> was- so. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Just a few more and we'll, uh, we'll hop on out of here. Let's see. We got JD JD says now that we got pain from Louisville, I definitely think we will be getting boogie flan for sure. Uh, listen, I hope they get boogie flan. And I, I do think I get it with a lot of these guys who've opened up their commitment and they say, Hey, no, like for real, I'm, I'm open. We're entertaining other, other offers, other options. And, and as they should, right? Because really a lot of these guys are top 25 level high school prospects and uh, right. they're hot commodities, man. So you'd be foolish not to hear some other places out. Um, I, I do think Arkansas has got a, a real shot here. I don't know off the top how much Kenny Payne moves that needle, uh, but I know that Boogie Flan's got some game. Like We went back and watched that McDonald's All-American game yesterday and he's got to put some weight on, but he can go, man. He is, uh, he's a really, really nice piece. I'd, I'd love to have him in the backcourt. Yeah, for sure. You can't, I mean, you can't go by boogie if you don't have some flair, right? And he's got, he's got, he's got the hair and the flair and he's just, I mean, he's, I think he's, he's college ready right away. I mean, I don't know if it's like necessarily your starting point guard. If you, unless if you, um, if you get a veteran point guard out of the transfer portal, but if not, I mean, I think he, after a training camp, he's probably your guy. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. He's, uh, He's a player, man. Hunter says, uh, is, is Payne the only assistant who's been officially signed and announced? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Um, again, like we got on pretty good authority that, you know, a guy like Ronnie Brewer is going to be back in some capacity. We've seen Chin Coleman, who was on the staff at Kentucky out with, out with Cal at the overtime elite deal on, uh, on Tuesday. So you would imagine that's going to happen. We've heard some other names, but yeah, this is the first one officially done. And it's a big one. Your associate head coach. I mean, that's your that's your right hand man. It's funny. We got this other comment here from uh, 
R2199 says, so if something happens to Cal, that means uh, that means Kenny Payne's our head coach. Please know. Listen, something happened to Cal in Fayetteville a few years ago. He got kicked out of the game when uh, when Kentucky was on the ropes in that crazy environment. And Kenny Payne got the dub. He, he got yeah. the dub over Mus. So, yeah, they came back from what, like seven, eight, nine points down. It was, yeah. uh, it was a significant deficit. They went to that zone. It's a savvy move. It's also yeah. a ballsy move by an assistant coach to take over. Uh, in that position and go to a zone, which we know Cal never does. So, you know, it was a good idea to do it against that Arkansas team. This is also a fact. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Let's see here. Scrolling down. Uh, Yeah. Brian McCarley says who's visiting us. No official word yet. Unless something's happened in in the last half hour, I'd be, man, I would be pretty surprised if, if they didn't have a visitor or two in this weekend, we haven't heard anything yet. It, it might be a deal where Cal's out on the road recruiting some other guys. We we just don't know uh, just yet what that's going to look like. And it, it's possible that there's nothing going on, but it's also possible that it, they're just kind of keeping things quiet. Um, and, and it's hard to get things confirmed when uh, when they don't have a staff. John that Calipari ain't answering my phone calls right now. I'm just going to be honest <laughs> with you guys. So uh, we'll see what happens there. I, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe a freshman or two wound up on on campus because it seems like those would be the, the easiest things to get done. Uh, you know, maybe a Carter Knox. Uh, we know Jaden Quaintance, who Arkansas really needs to get. We've talked about Louisville a lot. He's visiting there, I think, now. So I'd imagine that would be something that would end, you know, maybe sometime tomorrow. Uh, like I said, with a do, like, you, you want to pick that dude up from Waco and give him a Fayetteville. I would I would have Jaden Quaintance on the first flight out of out of Louisville to uh, to Fayetteville this weekend if, if I was them. I'm not no, them absolutely. or I would, or I would be meeting him outside of the yum center and being like, Hey, <laughs> let, let me show you Bud Walton brother. So uh, yeah. we'll see what happens there. And and obviously they're working on uh, potentially getting a guy like Brandon Garrison, the big center out of Oklahoma state in for a, for a visit next week. If he makes it out of that Texas, Texas visit uncommitted. So we'll see it, it's coming, but nothing, uh, nothing confirmed on this front just yet. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, does Kenny Payne help with with uh, Jaden Quaintance? I'm not sure if he does or not. I mean, he is the big man whisperer, so so you'd think that might be the the case. I'm not sure right off the top how uh, how heavily involved Louisville was in his recruitment the first time around. I'm sure they gave it a shot, um, but I mean, it certainly doesn't hurt. I don't, I don't think having Kenny Payne on staff hurts you with anybody uh, in terms of recruiting. It's just a matter of relationships and and how much it might help. Um, let's see. Maybe just a couple more. Uh, is there any interest in Pringle, the Alabama transfer? I doubt it. I hope not. <laughs> Although his, 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 uh, social media game is solid, man. It's solid. He's great on Twitter. So that I appreciate about him. Uh, yeah, that weird one handed free throw thing I could probably do without, but he's a, he's a tough son of a gun. So, yeah, I think it about, it came out. What was it? Roughly the same time a couple of nights ago that that uh, Jeremy Roach and Nick Pringle became available. Yeah, um, and you <laughs> found out who the ball knowers were when you when you saw the quote tweets on that one. Exactly talking about <laughs> whoa, Jeremy Roach was a whoa, Nick Pringle and a whoa. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, Addison says UConn seems to be the favorite for Liam McNeely, uh, but do you think we get him on campus for a visit? I think you're seeing a common theme here where it's like if, if so-and-so, if player a gets out of visit a uncommitted, then yeah, there's a good chance of that happening. If Liam McNeely gets out of this Yukon visit, which is, I think, I think it's either the 21st and 22nd or 22nd and 23rd. Uh, then yeah, I, I do think Arkansas has a chance to get him on campus for a visit. I don't think John Calipari takes the, the plane ride to Florida to Montverde Academy to visit with Liam McNeely unless he felt like he had a chance to get in the mix there. Yeah. Um, and that's we what talked, he did. We, so. we talked about intent and purposeful movements yep. earlier, the, early this morning. That's what that is. So like he, I don't feel like he goes there for, for no reason. I just don't. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Okay. I'm going to scroll down closer to the bottom. Cause we got to, we got to get out of here. A lot of people who came in late and it just asked kind of how we feel about, the Kenny Payne hire. Good. We feel pretty darn good about it. So there's that. Um, let's see. Yeah. See, 
Nobody, nobody's upset at you, man. Nobody's upset at you. You're good, Scotty. You're a family man, and we we appreciate that about you. I'm upset, dude. The screaming is crazy. I, I really, I promise you, we really haven't heard it. That's good. Just this just headset. Like Kingsley now, said, this this headset is like God's gift to me. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Caleb uh, Christian says the next commit we get is Knox. Uh, I, I think that there's a, a high likelihood that that's the case. If they get somebody before Knox, I think they still get Knox. So there you go. He'd be a good get. Big wing, NBA background, pedigree in the family. Ryan Horn says, I really would like to get the point guard from St. Mary's. I think he could play a good role for you. He might be Big Ten bound, though. We'll see. Still early in the game for him. He sounds like he's got everybody in the country reaching out to him. So, Right. I saw a, a question earlier. It was like, would you rather have Brea from Dayton or somebody else? And I can't remember who it was. But I remember when I looked at it initially, um, my first thought was Brea. Like, yeah. Yes. You know, a vet at the college level. Uh, I think he was like a two-time A-10, six-man of the year, almost shot 50% from three. Like, his jumper reminds me of Book. Like, I'm just – I'm sold on that kid already. Um, I did learn today that he's got rods surgically – he had rods surgically inserted into his uh, – both tibias on his legs, which is an incredibly wild thing to find out after the fact about somebody who just shot 50% for three for an entire college season on 200 attempts. But that's that's who he is, man. Tough kid, yeah, yeah. Sign me up for that dude. He is, uh, yeah, Brea or McNeely. I would take, I would right. take Brea. Um, I don't know. I feel like you could. I feel like that's that gives you something very specific on your team that you need to be what you want your team to eventually be. And I, I feel like McNeely could be a nice player, um, but I feel like you could get some some things that he brings from. Other guys, but both really good shooters. But I would rather go with a proven shooter, probably. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm with you on that front. Would love to have either one of them. If had to pick, give me the proven guy. Uh, last couple things here, and then we are uh, we're gonna dip out. I see here, Brea apparently isn't focusing on us. Yeah, I don't know how valid that that tweet was that came out. I'm not trying to discount it. I just I just don't know who that person is, and I and I haven't seen it for me the main national guys. So it very well could be true, but I. I just don't know if that's the case or not. And then, uh, you know, I, I think it's just you have to take some of that stuff with a grain of salt right now because Cal is fresh to the game at Arkansas. And when he reaches out, people are going to listen. So I, I wouldn't rule it out until there's an official list cut uh, and maybe visits are set and everything. But, yeah, I, I did see that. So um, we'll see. Um Yes, I, I also saw the, the stuff there about maybe Antigua wanting to stay at Kentucky. Uh, but I, I just – from everything I've gathered, I just, I don't think that's going to be the case. So, um, he's going to wind up somewhere, whether that's going to be Arkansas or not. I, I don't know. Um, maybe it doesn't sound as likely as it did before, but we will see. And then, uh, the final one here. So only pain is on staff. No, that's the, that's the only one that's been officially officially announced contract out signed announced. Like we said, uh, Cal's had some guys out recruiting with him. Uh, been seen, been on site. We know Bruce sticking around. Um, Maybe they just want to announce their associate head, and then once they get the re- the rest of the assistants and the staff in place, they'll do kind of a blanket announcement. I don't know. We'll see what that looks like. But, no, it's uh, it's coming together. It's more than a one-man band there behind Cal, so no worries on that front. Um, let's get out of here. Scotty, what do you say? Yeah, sounds good to me. It's yeah. oddly quiet in my house right now, so I'm wondering if something's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go uh, go check on the kiddos and make sure everything's all right. Uh, appreciate everybody for tuning in with us this evening. Uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. And uh, if it brings something cool, we'll be there to talk about it uh, probably in the office unless it's in the evening. And then we'll be back here. But for Scotty Borderline, it's been Curtis Wilkerson with Natty State Sports. It's been the pot at the palace. We appreciate you and we will catch you guys next time.